Mumineen, we are starting Surah Hajj, uh, verse number 41st, and the translation goes like that. Those who, if we establish them in the land, perform the prayer and pay the alms and enjoin good and forbid evil, and unto Allah belongs the end of affairs. This verse is a general verse. It's not for the specific group of believers, because some sects of Islam, they think that this verse was only for the uh, Muhajirin Ansar. But Mizan says that this is not the case. This is a case for, in general, for the all believers till end time. That their, their duty is that when they are settled down somewhere and they have society, they have to build Islamic society. And they should pray regularly and do zakat, charity, you know, and they should uh, ask, uh, enjoy the good and forbid the evil. Um, you know, you can live in a non-Muslim country, and if you live in non-Muslim country, you should not become like terrorist, you know, like some people have done some places that, oh, we are establishing Islamic society and do terrorism against government. This is not right. There are the decrees from Maharajas, that if you live in the country, you have got to respect the laws. I want to make it clear through this channel, you know. But it doesn't mean that you just go to their values either, you know. There's a path in between, you know, that you follow, you make your Islamic community and you don't, uh, you know, and it's a peaceful way and you try to maintain your values. Like, like if you live in Atlanta, Atlanta is a melting pot. And so you have to have Islamic schools when you train your children to become Islamic, you know. And you should have your centers where you, you run Islamic program so that you can follow your values. Otherwise, it's a melting pot, you know. So you would understand what it means, you know. If you have Islamic uh, country, then it's a different issue. Then you make your own Islamic governments. That's a different issue. But if you are in a place where uh, you are minority, then you have to at least maintain your values and have Islamic community. You cannot just become a melting pot. But this verse especially, Imam Muhammad Baqala Salam says, Allah Muhammad, that this verse came for Qayyam, Imam Mahdi Salam, this verse especially, because uh, when he comes, inshallah, then the, the world will be filled with justice. And there will be only Islam at that time because, because he established the, the religion of Allah to the whole planet. So, so we are all the part of the process to do according to our situations and our circumstances to struggle to that level, you know, and to become the part of the process because it's a gradual process how to establish yourself and how to, to teach each, each other and to how to prepare for Imam to come according to your uh, capabilities. Everybody has a different potential and capabilities to do accordingly. But you should try to do with your best, especially with the knowledge and your good manners. If you are in a, a non-Islamic country, then you should have at least good manners and good knowledge because you represent Imam Zaman. People have false opinion about Imam Zaman that he's going to come and just, you know, have just war, war, war. No, no, no. When Prophet came, how many war were there? Only thousand people died in the whole Saudi Pennsylvania, and the whole Pennsylvania became Muslim because of his behavior. Same thing with Imam. Inshallah, he comes. His 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 knowledge, his behavior will make people convert to Islam because of his personality and his knowledge. People will be more receptive to him because people are becoming more intelligent and more wiser to accept him. Inshallah. So there are, uh, I'm going to recite some, uh, uh, some hadith, like uh, somebody asked Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi that, uh, that who is the best of the people? And Prophet said, the one who among them who enjoys right and forbid wrong more than others is of the most virtuous people try to gain pleasure of Allah more than others. That is the biggest deed which we should do, you know. To enjoy for the uh, good and forbid the evil. It's the biggest deed. 
Mula Mutakian says, you know, all virtuous deeds totally, including even the holy war in the way of Allah, comparing with enjoying right and forbidding wrong, is like a small amount of saliva in deep ocean. All deeds are this small compared to this deed. Amar bin Marv and Ayman Munkar. But there are, there are ways how to do that. You cannot be rude to people. Uh, they have given a very good example of a person, a young man comes to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, uh, and the companions were sitting and this young man uh, told Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, do you let me adulterate? See how rude he was. And people got angry, Asaab got angry, that what are you talking to Prophet? Do you let me adulterate? So Prophet didn't get upset and our Prophet asked him very calmly, how would you see if that happens to your mother? He got shy. Then he said, how would you see if it happens to your daughter? He got again shy. Then he said, how would you see if it happens to your daughter? He became more shy and regretful what he asked Prophet Wasallam. Then Prophet called him close and put his hand on his chest. And he said, O oh Allah, purify his heart. Forgive his sins and keep him safe from being polluted with indecency. That's how Prophet behaved. That's how he did Amr bin Marwan and Amr And from then on, the most hated thing with that young man was adultery. Because he said so beautifully. Explain him so beautifully. That's the way he did Amr bin Marwan to that young man. That's how Islam spread. وَإِن يُكَذِّبُكَ فَقَدْ قَذَّبَتْ قَبْلُهُمْ قَوْمِ نُوحٍ وَعَادٍ وَثَمُودٍ وَقَوْمُ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَقَوْمِ لُوطٍ وَأَصْحَابَ الْمَدْيَنِ وَكُذِّبَ مُوسَى فَأَمْلَأْتُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ ثُمَّ أَقَتْتُهُمْ فَكَيْفَ كَانَ نَكِيرٌ And if they belie you, then already before them did the people of Noah and Ad and Thamud belie, and the people of Abraham and people of Lot. And the dwellers of Median and Moses was belied, but I gave respite to the disbelievers, then I did seize them. So how will be my punishment? See, because people always belied prophets. All the prophets were belied, like Prophet Noah was belied. He preached for more than 900 years. And the people of Ad and Thamud belied. You know, like you can go to documentary, see the palaces of Thamud, you know. Those palaces are still there, you know, in Jordan and those areas. They, 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 they lived there so beautifully. They belied, and the Prophet Abraham and Prophet Loth was belied, and Shoei Balasana was belied, and, and Moses was belied. And uh, so Allah says that I gave them respite to those disbelievers, and then I seized them. So how was my punishment? So Allah gives them respite, you know. Respite has two things, you know. For believer, respite is good. That we can repent and return to Allah. Like this, we have COVID thing. It's a time that we should, uh, we are still alive in this COVID. You should repent and so we go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being repented. But for some, uh, respite is bad. Because especially who are the arrogant people, they take respite as a thing that, Nobody is there to watch them and they do more sins and they get even worse. And then Allah punishment comes finally. So you know like Allah has a ways to do things. Allah picks people, good people and bad people. And he takes good people to the maximum of their perfection and the bad people he takes to the maximum level of downfall. Allah that's what he does. Depending on your, your intention and your struggle, Allah takes you where you want to go. And nobody can do any harm to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah doesn't do injustice. It's, it's we, we do injustice to ourselves. You know, this, this, this COVID is a hujjat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And even if this COVID, somebody do zoom to themselves, Allah says that you still did zoom to yourself, did so much sense. When you saw so many people dying and dead and still you are not pious. This will be question from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
فق ای من قریت اہلکنا ہا وہی ظالم تن فہی خاویت علا عروشی ہا و بئرم مؤت تلاتم و قصر مشید سو ہاؤ مینی آف ٹاؤن شیف وی ڈی ڈسٹرائی وائل دے ویر انجسٹ اینڈ ہے فالن اینڈ دیر والس ہے فالن ڈاؤن اوور دیر روف اینڈ ہاؤ مینی اے ویل ایبارڈن اینڈ ایون لافٹی کیسلز روینڈ اللہ سے ہاؤ مینی آر دا ٹاؤنز وچ وی ڈسٹرائی They were unjust people. You know, you can go to Egypt and see all these pyramids and for the foolish people, it might look something great, but who are believers, they start wondering what happened to these pharaohs, where did they go? And these are all just, just there's ghost pyramids standing there saying that the dwellers are gone. And fools just see that how beautiful it is, but the genius, they take admonition, say that where pharaoh now? He used to call himself as a god. So, so Allah is talking about that we destroy while they were unjust and their walls have fallen down on their roofs because it becomes so weak because there was nobody to look for those houses and how many wells are abandoned, the wells where they should take water because nobody is there to use that well anymore. So it's like an abandoned well and lofty castles ruined because nobody is there to live anymore. These lofty castles are pharaoh. You know, all those cases of Mughal Empire, you go to India, people think very happy about, oh, great cases, but they're all, nobody lives there, the people are gone, we'll be gone too. So, Masum says that what is the meaning of, what is the meaning of wells here? Wells means uh, the silent Imam, who nobody goes and asks question. Silent Imam is called wells here. You know, this is the deeper meaning of wells here. And Masum says about lofty castles is a speaking Imam who speaks to people and people listen to him. Afalam yasiru fil ardi fatakunu lahum qulubun yaqiluna biha aw adhanun yasma'una biha fa inha la ta'amal absaru walakin ta'amal qulubu allati fi sudur. Have they not traveled in the land so that they should have they, uh, show, they should have hearts wherewith to understand or ears wherewith to hear? For verily blind are not the blind are not the eyes, but blind are the hearts which are in the breast. Allah says, have not traveled in the uh, land like we are talking about, going to Egypt and seeing those Pharaoh's people, how they are gone are going to Mughal Empire, see all Mughals are gone. Allah says, hey, they have not traveled to land, so that they should have hearts wherewith to understand, they should have heart to understand what happened to them, with the truth, or ears wherewith to hear the truth, what happened to them. For verily, blinds are not the eyes, Allah says, eyes are not blind, but blind are the hearts which are in the breast. What is blind is the heart in the breast. So what the heart means? Heart means our soul, our cognition, our understanding. That's the heart Allah is talking about. That some people have open cognition, open understanding of things. Their soul is good soul. And they can understand things. And some people are just blind. Their hearts are blind, you know. They see with their eyes, but they, their eyes of heart are closed. They are blind people. The so Prophet Sallallahu says, When Allah intends to do a favor to a servant, He causes the eyes of heart to open by which He can see see whatever was concealed to him. What was concealed to him, he starts seeing. See, this is a beautiful saying of Prophet Sallallahu that a believer sees what others don't see. There are several stages of that, you know, seeing things, you know, depending on the level of your belief, you know. See the believer see mask in a different way than the non-believer see the mask. The believer, the way see he sees Quran, non-believer does not see Quran this way, you know. But this is just the beginning of seeing things, you know. But the, if your belief is high, your purity is high, you see more than other people. Allah makes you see unseen more than other people, you know. You know, Ayatullah Taqi Bajat, when people used to come to see him, they used to pray to Allah, they'd hide my, my shortcomings in front of Ayatullah because he'll see what is there on my face. What sin I have done, he'll see it. Yes, Sattar al they used to pray before he's, they used to visit him to, uh, because he could see it because Allah had opened his eyes of heart so much.
that he could see because of his purity of heart. More our heart is pure, more, more Allah makes us see things, you know. Uh, Allah so, sees more dreams in the night to show what is happening in the future is going to happen. People have those, those kind of blessings because of their purity. They see what other people don't see. You know, for somebody, some could be like Miss Universe beautiful, right? Right? Because they are seeing the face of the, the, the Miss Universe, right? But for Arif, he's seeing something else there and he'll just turn his face with the anger. Because what he sees, people don't see it, you know. When Allah takes away the curtains out, the world looks very different. Very different, you know. Which uh, we pray to Allah to sh remove the curtains from us, you know. Some person could be looking very handsome and in a nice suit and rich guy. But for a Arif, he might be a different thing which Allah don't see in him. And he'll just turn his face from him. Because he is seeing what others are not seeing. So these are the curtains. وَيَسْتَعْجِلُونَكَ بِالْعَذَابِ فَلَنْ يُخْلِفُ اللَّهُ عَدَوْ وَإِنَّ يَوْمًا عِنْدَ رَبِّ كَ أَلْفِ سَنَةٍ مِمَّا تَعْقُدُونَ and they demand to of you to hasten on the punishment. While does never Allah fail His promise? And verily a day with your Lord is, is a thousand years of what you number. They used to hurry for the punishment. This is the behavior of all the non-believers from the time of Adam al -Salam. Because they never believed in prophets. They said, bring the punishment, bring the punishment. And you know what happened to them? Very scary. You know, Qom Nuh said, you know, I get scared when I think about it. Home and Nuh asked Prophet, bring the punishment. And they got drowned, right? From their day, they are getting punishment in Barzakh. It has been 8,000 years minimum, getting punishment. First, they had the punishment of drowning, and they are getting punished in the Barzakh till judgment day, and after judgment day, again, they will get punishment. And they are rushing so much. See how bad it is? 8,000 years, you know, they are getting punishment in the fire. And it's still not judgment day yet. They'll get on judgment day, then again, bigger punishment. We should be so afraid, you know. But the people who have no understanding, there's just a rush for punishment, you know. Show it to us, show it, what are you talking about? And that's what happens. Once you die, this total different story starts. So what Allah says? And they demand of you to hasten on punishment while does never Allah fail his promise. Allah doesn't fail his promise. He's promised you that you'll get it. And verily a day with your Lord is a thousand years of what you number? What is the meaning of this sentence? What is the meaning of this verse? That means, Mizan explained very well that for Allah one day and thousand years same. One day is not too short for us, for Allah, and thousand years is not too big for Allah. For Allah, thousand years is nothing. For Allah, one day is nothing. For Him is same. Because Allah has control for everything. People rush to do things because they are afraid that somebody is going to stop their mission, right? Allah is not afraid of anybody that His mission, His promise will be stopped. So Allah is not in rush. For thousand years, Allah is nothing. One day for Allah is nothing. Because nobody can stop Allah and nobody can stop his mission. So Allah doesn't rush things. Allah says, I have promised you. That's it. And he is not worried about one day or thousand years, nothing. Because he's going to do that. He is not, he is omnipotent. He can do anything. So uh, rushing comes from weak people who think that somebody is going to stop them. And how many townships I did give a respite while we are unjust, then I did seize them and unto me is the return. That's what happened. This is the story of this world. Say the story of this world. If you want to hear the story of this world, what happened? Allah gave them respite and people were unjust and Allah seized them. And Allah says, then they return to me. This is the story of this world. I always remember the hadith of Prophet ﷺ. That for each thousand human beings, 
One will go to paradise, and 99 and 99 will go to hellfire. This is the story of this so-called smart world. Because they got betrayed with the majority, not pondering with Allah's signs, and just doing the superficial things and going for superficial things of the world. Their heart could not see what they had to see. They just saw with the eyes. Nowadays, people see with these eyes only everything, you know. They don't see from the hard eye. Everything, eyes. Oh, this is very shiny. This is very glittery. That's how the world has become like, like apps. They don't have thinking. Oh, this is so beautiful with the eyes. You don't see anything behind it? No. Because 999 will go to hellfire. And that's what the world is going for. قُلْ يَحْيُ النَّاسُ إِنَّمَا أَنَا لَكُمْ نَذِيرٌ مُبِينٌ فَالَّذِينَ آمِنُوا عَمِلَ الصَّالِحَاتِ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ Say, O oh people, I am only a plain warner unto you. Then those who believe and do righteous deed, for them is forgiveness and honorable sustenance. You know, Prophet is Rahmatul Lil Alameen, right? He is a Rahma. But his, one of the biggest Rahma is that he is a plain warner. A plain warner, you know, you know, like who is good teacher, who just is strict to the student and disciplines them, fears them about failing, is a good teacher and is a merciful teacher, right? And her teacher is a lousy teacher, she won't threaten students, she won't care, and they will be failing. Prophet was a plain warner, he said, plain warning, you know, that was his mercy to the human being. People don't understand his mercy came from plain warning and giving glad tidings. But he's the warner. Here comes warner only. This time he's been called only the plain warner. Because he warned about it. Because most of the people go astray. So those who believe and do righteous deed, for them is forgiveness and honorable sustenance. The one who has a believer eyes, he sees honorable sustenance coming. Not for this glamour of this world where people are dying and but still people are seeing the glimmer of this world not seeing from the eyes of the heart what is the reality coming the reality of honorable sustenance coming for eternity they don't see that only after thousand only one sees that who will go there to that honorable sustenance of paradise we pray to Allah that we see that that's why it's very important to make a community an Islamic community so we see that thing that honorable sustenance and see from the eyes of the heart because if you are in melting pot you don't see it you are just materialistic person that's why it's so important to do Amr bin Manuf and Hanil Munkar to guide the community to prepare for the Zahur of Imam Zaman salam. but it's very important to do that thing of reminding people of unseen which is coming in the future we remember Imam Hussain alayhi salam. It is easy to do Amr bin Maruf to the Kuffar, but it's very hard to do Amr bin Maruf to Munafiqeen from the Muslim community, you know, who, who are called to be Muslim and, and try to betray other Muslims by their deceit. At the time of Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Yazid came with the biggest deceit that I am the leader of Muslims. And all those people around him, all these mullahs and muftis and qazis, they supported him for the material life and they said he's right it was the hardest thing for Imam Hussain to do that to take the blame of people when he was leaving the Hajj people were questioning why are you leaving the Hajj let's do Hajj you know where are you going there you know people had no clue of understanding and getting up and talking against the oppressor people had no clue of that Imam Hussain did that Imam says I'm going to Karbala for Amir bin Maruf and Anu Munkar and he took the mission, very few could understand him. Even from Bani Hashim, many people left him. Because they didn't understand the meaning of standing up against the oppression and seeing the pure Islam. Pure Islam is different than being Muslim. He went to pure Islam, you know. The pure Islam. And pure Islam is Islam of sacrifice, you know, and he stood up. And people didn't understand him at that time. Later on, people understood him. If we want to be with Imam Mahdi, we have to understand the Islam of Imam Hussain. 